What's up everybody? Welcome to video one of this three-part series. In today's video, we're going to dive into the computer and I'm actually going to show you product research. So make sure you get rid of your distractions and you set aside some time for this because this is the most important part of getting started with Amazon because you want to make sure that your product will sell. You want to make sure it's a good product with good opportunities for you to sell and it's not too competitive and that you actually get a profit. There's a profit margin there. So without further ado, let's dive into this computer and get started. All right, everyone, we're in the computer. And as you can see here, I already have Amazon pulled up. This is the very first step that I use. It's one of the, my personal favorite um, methods for doing product research because it's a little bit different than what everybody else teaches. A lot of people teach you what we call the black box method, which is using a software tool and just typing in certain criteria, which is, that is another method to do. I'm just not going to show you that one um, because everybody shows it to you and you have to have the software to do it. You will have to have software to kind of show revenue and stuff like that, but I will show you what software I use. I will show you how to do it from Amazon. But and in that method, you just separate yourself from like a minimum price range to a maximum price range with a minimum review to a maximum review. And it's very generic. Everybody does it. Everybody sees the same items. And then everybody goes after the same product that thinks a good one. So I like to think outside of the box a little bit. So my first method is Amazon. I come over here to Amazon and this is very important. If you're not logged into your account, make sure you have a United States address uh, based address right here or zip code so you can actually see products that are shipped in the US or being, or being sold in the US if you're shopping on the US or selling on the US marketplace so if you're in a different country then you just want to set it to your um your marketplace that you plan on selling in because if you live in say uh, the UK or Canada and you get the rights to sell in the US marketplace you want to make sure you're looking for products in the US marketplace that are selling um, so let's break this down. You have your search bar here. This uh, search, there's, a, there's a method here. You have your best sellers and you have like just little tabs. I like new releases as well. We're going to start with my first method, which is the search bar. And as you can see, a search bar, when you type a letter, it automatically populates like the most interesting or the most searched keywords or topics that people are actually typing in with the letter Y. Um, or, or anything you searched uh, also auto populates. So, but I've never in my life looked at a Yeti water bottle. I've never looked up yeast. Uh, I've never looked up a Yankee candle. I just hopped in the word why. I don't even, uh, Yeti Tumblr, I'm not, I don't use that Yetis. So that's not something I've ever searched. So that's not in my search history. I have typed yoga mat in before. I'm going to kind of show you that for an example, but I would open this, I would type a letter. I would look at stuff like this and then I would see if anything interests me. So if yoga mat hypothetically interests me, I would click yoga mat. This is way too saturated. And, and real quick disclaimer guys, any products I do show you during this method over the next day, uh, I don't recommend you doing them due to the fact that if 5,000 people watch this video and I see a good product and all of you are like, oh, that's a good product. Well, 5,000 people just decided that they're probably gonna go launch this product. So I personally don't recommend you doing that. And most of the products I, I'm sure I'm going to find in the next hour aren't going to be winning products because it takes a lot of time. This is, the, like I said, the most critical, important thing ever is your product research. So, and, and, and another thing I like to do is uh, have pen and paper available. And whenever you come across something you think is a good idea, just write it down. We'll do a deep dive product research later. So I'm going to have a list of 100, 100, 200, 300 products before I dig really deep and see if it's a good product. So make sure you're ready with that. Yoga mat though, for example, this is what's gonna pop up when you type in the word yoga mat. And if you look up here at the top right of my computer screen, I have this extension called Jungle Scout. I will provide a link below this video or in the email you got uh, for this extension. This is a paid tool, uh, highly recommend it. Without using any paid software, it's going to be really hard for you to get accurate data about sales and competition. So, because I'll show you right here, like the very first product on this page is this yoga mat right here. And it sells for $21.41, basic yoga mat, right? And they're doing $46,481 a month in revenue. They have 2,000 reviews. 
And this is what I base my what's a good product. I base it off of data, based off of reviews and the revenue, the price and stuff, really not the price, the price a little bit because I don't, I don't recommend you sell products less than $15 just due to the fact there's not enough room for profits. Um, I, I do have a product that I sell for $12.99. Um, it's a small, it gets what they call in the small light program where it's cheaper, your fees are cheaper, everything's cheaper. Um, it's shipped to a specific warehouse and the problem is that my profit every time I sell one may only be three dollars or two dollars because usually your profit margin off of your is off your sell price is on Amazon's roughly forty percent. It could be thirty percent, forty percent, or fifty percent. That's the ballpark. On average, you'll see the profit margins from this product to be around forty percent. So the revenue profit margins of forty six thousand is roughly twenty thousand dollars a month for this person selling this yoga mat. This person, 32, 10, 150, 16. So you see there's a lot of money, but look at, this is what I have you look at, is the number of reviews. All of these people have over a thousand reviews. Like every one of them. So definitely do not sell this product. A big takeaway on finding a good product is the top three salespeople. I don't like more than three people to have greater than a thousand reviews. And I, I do also like to load more results here, but I'll show you guys that in a little bit. I don't like um, three people, the top three people to have greater than a thousand reviews. If three people, sometimes if five people have a thousand reviews, I may still go after it. But three is really, really my criteria. Say like there's only two people or three people with just over a thousand reviews and everybody else has like 300, 400, 500. I feel like I could honestly make the product better. I can make my packaging better. I can make the customer experience better. I can make everything so much better when I launch my product that those people don't matter to me and that there's still potential. Another thing I really like to look at is right here um, on the left. It says over 2,000 results for the main keywords being very, the very broad. You want to search broad keywords a lot whenever you're typing. So over 2000 results for the words yoga mat. Um, that means you're likely, how many pages is that? That's a lot of pages. You're probably showing 15 to 20 results per page. That's a hundred pages. The chances of you being seen are very slim. You will be seen. You will always make sales on Amazon. I can almost promise you that, but you can lose money because if you're on page 100, the chances of anybody ever finding you are slim to none. Like you see this person, Gets, they get one sale a day, they're, they're on page one though. And they may just have launched, who knows, what, what did it say? They've launched um, 2018, the product probably just sucks. It doesn't even look like a yoga mat. Um, but this is the software, like I said, I'll keep it linked. The link will provide you a 30% discount. I do recommend you get this. This is called the Chrome extension. Um, I believe, I, I purchased it a while back when I bought my Chrome extension, it was a one-time lifetime fee. I don't know if it's still the same. I do know you get access to it with your monthly subscription plan. I believe you could purchase the Chrome extension for a one-time fee. May have a monthly fee to it. Don't quote me on that. Um, but let's get started. So we're not gonna do yoga mat. So go back to the search bar. We type the word right, why, right? So what you would do next is you would type another letter going for a word. So let's go, let's just say I go for yoga. Well, now I can see yoga mat, yoga blocks, yoga mat for women. Um, it's a lot of yoga mats, so I don't want a yoga mat. So there's yoga blocks. You could click that, or you could type the space bar and see if anything changed. Only the bottom one changed, yoga mat strap. And if I type another letter, I'm going to type another letter, and it's not going to be with an M. It's going to be yoga, it's going to be P. So now you see pants pull up, pillow pulls up, pad pulls up, props. I don't even know what a yoga pad is. Yoga props. I don't know what that is. Yoga poster. Yoga Pilates stick. See, so I would have never thought of that product. It may be a good product, it may be a bad product. I don't even know what a Yoga Pilates stick is. But you saw how I typed the word yoga and I added one letter and it gave me an idea. So now imagine if you typed the word yoga and you went through every letter on your keyboard and you come up with 10, 15, 20 ideas. Now go type the word like wood and then you'll probably get a bunch of other stuff. This, for example, if I type the word wood, I get wood glue, probably not going to sell that. Wood, woodward rage, don't know what that is. Wooden spoons for cooking, wooden hangers, um, wooden beads. But then if I hit space, 
all of it changed. I got wood filler, wood putty, wood cutting board, wood pellets for a smoker, wood floor cleaner, wood stain. I'm not going to use floor cleaners or stain. Stay away from chemicals. And then I'm going to type another letter like W. Wood wicks for candle making. I never thought, I don't, can, I don't know anything about that, but it may be a good product. Wood wicked candles, wood watches for men, wood wax, wood watch, wood wipes. What are you going to wipe with wood? Okay, wood, 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 wood wall shelves. So you get the point and then you click through it. But let's go back to this poll that we see here. I want to just look at it. I don't know anything about it. Um, I don't personally like 2000 results. I, I like it to be in the hundreds uh, personally. If I can find a product with only four or five, 600 people, I feel like I have a higher probability of being seen, which you do. And, but I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to click my Jungle Scout it's going to populate. Give it a few minutes to load. Don't jump into a conclusion that one of these are good because it's still populating. Um, if you look right here, it says SP. That means it's a sponsored ad and they're not organically placed there. They're advertising. You see right here, it says sponsored. Sponsored. These people are paying for ads with inside of Amazon to be placed on the first page, which I highly recommend, especially you see, because he's only got 37 reviews. 44 reviews, 50 reviews, they're all very low reviews, but they need to get recognition. So for the only way for them to do that is to run ads. So yes, you have to have an advertising budget if you expect to ever sell products and be seen. Um, let's look at them. They're not doing too hot. Uh, but like I said, we don't look at, none of them are doing good. $300, people aren't buying this product. So this is clearly any opportunity stores also a little thing. It's low demand with high competition. There's a lot of people selling it and nobody's buying it. This is like the only person and that's not even a pole or a yoke. That's not even a stick. It's the straps that people use. So that's not even in the right category. That just popped up under these keywords. So now if I actually typed, so now you see that this person right here, they're making 8,400 a month off of yoga straps. So we've real, we've come to the conclusion that this yoga Pilates stick is not a good product, but we think this yoga strap may be a good product. So what you want to do is go back into your search bar and type the word yoga strap because it's a totally different keyword. Again, we're over 200,000 people or 2000 people, but you don't see any of those Pilates poles or whatever those sticks. So now let's do the jungle scout Chrome extension one more time. And we're going to look specifically at straps and not that little stick. And as you see here, that same coup that we were just looking at is the first product on this page making 8,000. The next one's making 3,000. It's hideous. That's, uh, uh, that's absolutely horrendous. Like look how nice that looks compared to that. And that is a big thing when it comes to products, guys, like we buy with our eyes, we visibly purchase products with our eyes. It's the same thing. Like, Oh, what's prettier? And you may not like a Ferrari, but what is prettier? A Ferrari or a Toyota Camry? A Ferrari. And so the price sticker on it, perceived value, is prettier than this. Same when you go in the store and all the colors on the shelves for boxes, that looks good. You always say that looks good when you want something. You look at menus, there's pictures and stuff. So you can say in your mind, that looks good and purchase it. So that's the thing. If it doesn't look good, people aren't going to buy it. So a big thing about this, like, look, that looks horrible. Like, I don't know if it's just the white and black. White's my favorite color, but that is a horrible picture. And that might be why it has 204 sales. And then this person has 13, they have 8,000 in sales. It's, it's nice, shiny. They show you multiple color swabs, like a person in the background. That looks good. Um, this one, again, is probably the same brand, same brand. So you see the same person, same coup. They make 8,000 here. They make 8,000 or 6,000 here. Uh, that's the same product as the one above. It's just duplicated. Um, and as you see though, but back to your regular criteria, you want to look at the reviews. I instantly see more than three people with a thousand reviews. I see one, two, three, that one. These are all sponsored. Personally, I don't like the product. I don't like this revenue margin. The reviews aren't horrendous, but that's still horrendous. Um, the profit's not there. I like to see a revenue of bare minimum, bare minimum myself, like 
ten thousand dollars i i tell people like in your position if you're absolutely new and you think you can get in with a revenue of around six thousand i like to see people selling because you got to think you're trying to get a, a a chunk of this so i don't like if you see five or six thousand what are the chances of you getting five or six thousand out the gate so i i try to recommend that you stick around ten thousand dollars that way if if you only get like 20 percent of that you still make two thousand dollars minus the fact that you only gonna make four your 40 percent profit i honestly say ten thousand dollars minimum monthly revenue i'm going to show you some stuff real quick that you saw the yoga mats are getting like a hundred thousand um and i'm sure you've heard of like the fidget spinner when it came out that was a very trendy product so i don't try to shoot for products like that um i like to look for stuff that's more long term that will make you money and print you money for years to come so for example, let's do resistance. See, so you, you just start, and again, just start typing stuff. Stuff will pop up, and then you come up with ideas. Um, and, and we're about done beating up Amazon. You see how to do it. Click resistance. I just want to show you real quick. These are different types of resistance bands. You see this one's different than this one. Um, that's number one. That's number two. I just want to show you what a good revenue is on a good product. But you see how it has 5,000 results. Don't, don't go try to sell this. If you try to sell this, I would t totally tell you to sell it, your own brand and uh, sell it on a Shopify store. Don't try to come compete on Amazon because you're not going to rank up front. You're just, you're just not. But look at the monthly revenue on this Fit Simplify, $225,000, um, 40,000 reviews. Chances of you competing with them are very slim. This guy's got $212,000, $45,000. So you see the potential is really there. Um, all right, so this enough about that. Quick recap. Use the search bar to type in letters in words, like, I don't even know, whatever you want, just type in letters. This takes hours, guys, hours. Write down a list, like lemon squeezer, juicer, uh, essential oil, zester, there's all, lemon balm, lemon, okay, don't do balms, don't do anything with chemicals. Uh, you'll have to get ungated and get approved and it's just for a beginner. I don't recommend it. Um, but just type in stuff, come up with ideas, use your extension, look at the prices, make sure it fits the criteria. Again, the criteria is no more than three people with a thousand reviews. You want a revenue of at least $10,000. Um, and that's mostly it. You want to make sure it's a product that also doesn't, isn't trademarked or have any, uh, design patents. A lot of stuff falls under the, the common goods uh, category, under the common goods law to where you can sell it though. So let's move forward with looking in new releases. All right, we are now inside of new releases. Click right here on the top tab. You're going to want to come over here and um, pick a department, whatever department you want to sell in. Obviously not what you want to sell in, it's wherever you find a good product. You got to keep in mind, you cannot sell in every department. I will send you a list of, um, or, or just, just Google it. Just Google restricted categories on Amazon. And then it'll pop up and it'll tell you where you can and cannot sell. It, I'm not saying you can't sell in restricted categories. It just requires you to get ungated, which is just, it's sometimes easy, sometimes hard. But for the sake of this video, don't worry about it. Let's start with something simple like home and kitchen. And then, so now the reason I like new releases is because these products have been released, released recently, as you can see by the reviews, they have very low reviews. So they recently got released and also received a uh, new release for a uh, uh, badge because they have sold uh, a reasonable amount of uh, volume relatively quickly. So I like to look here and look at products that are selling. We see fa face masks due to the current time and the situation going on at the time of this video. Um, face masks obviously have been trending. I don't recommend you sell them though because a lot has gone on with that inside of Amazon. So let's move forward from there. Um, just so, just come on here and browse. Check different areas, check different apartments. And what you'll do is you want to look at products that are totally random. Like this is an air mattress. I wouldn't sell an air mattress because you're going to be competing against multiple, multiple brands, very big brands that have unlimited advertising budget. And that is not something you want to compete against, especially as a beginner. 
So I stay away from stuff like air mattresses, vacuum cleaners, because you're gonna be competing against Dyson and Eureka and really big name brand people. But for example, I don't, what is this? Nature Fresh Air Purifier Bags. Um, I have no idea what this is. So this, I'm assuming anybody can sell it. I would click it and then I would do a little bit of research. So it doesn't have much reviews. Let's click our Jungle Scout extension up here. And let's just see how much money this is really bringing in. And it may not be a lot. It may be a lot. So let's take a look. I'm, I'm impressed. They're doing $69,000 roughly in revenue every single month with only 278 reviews. That's a lot of revenue. Just think about it. 40% uh, profit margin easily brings us to around 35 or, or 33,000, I'd say. $30,000 a month in pure profit from a fresh air purifier bag. So exit off of here. Now what you need to do is take the most broad keywords that you can find, air purifier bags, and copy it. And after you copy it, make sure you scroll up to all departments because we want to look across all of Amazon. And you're going to paste it right here in the search bar and let it populate all of the competition in that specific product. And it's going to show you right here, it's got a thousand results, not horrible, not the best, not horrible, um, because it is over. So we don't know how much over, um, but you see there's a bunch of people selling them. So let's click our uh, Jungle Scout extension and see what we have. We, and, and the SP, like I said, uh, we're not going to look at these because these are sponsored. We can still look at some of the data because obviously you can sponsor your product, but we're not really going to use them because they're not organically ranked there. Um, so right here, this person is doing $273,000 a month. They have 3,000 reviews, but the revenue is really high. But I see clearly right behind them at 52,000 a month, 766 reviews, uh, different brands. Why Wika? This is the same person doing 131,000 and 2,000 reviews. And then this person at 106,000 reviews, $5,000, or not reviews, $106,000 in revenue, 5,000, but you see the picture sucks. Who would buy that? Four pack for $24, and um, compared to this person who has a 15 pack for $24. So make sure you uh, package your products based off of what other people are doing and where they're seeing results. A four pack is not seeing results as much as a 15 pack. So I would I would say that maybe a 10, 12, or 15 pack would be your optimal. Let, let's look here. This is a four pack doing 273,000, but they have a lot more reviews. They've been selling for a lot more time, it looks like. Um, and, but their picture's better. They're, they're again, they're doing a four pack and they're doing a lot of revenue. And, but look at that picture. That picture is just horrible. Like, that shows you the power of your pictures because you just got to think about it. We pers we buy with our eyes. The better something looks, the more likely somebody is going to buy it. We, everything is perceived of value, whether it be a car, whether it be a Ferrari, if you like Ferraris or not, a Ferrari is going to outweigh uh, a Toyota Camry perceivably, 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 perceivably. I don't know if that's right. But you're going to perceive it to be worth a lot more and you're going to like it a lot more. So it, it, that's how you buy just like the grocery store, all the colors and stuff and pictures in a restaurant. You're like, that looks good. So you buy it. So make sure you differentiate yourself by looking good. And they try to do that on their actual bags, but it doesn't look like it's working out for them. However, if they had a way better picture, better packaging, and it looked something more like this, I don't know. It looks like it's bamboo charcoal. It's obviously like organic and stuff. So I would probably go with a more organic look, kind of like these people. Um, and they're doing really well. Um, but you see how well this worked when we just found this on new releases. But let's, looking at this, 278 reviews. This is the one we found. They've just started selling um, in June, July or something of... Uh, January, March, and June of this year, 278 reviews. They're doing really well. These people right below them with 500 reviews, still doing 17,000, 200 reviews, still doing 17, 18,000, 500 reviews, still doing 63,000. It's a 12 pack. Um, that just shows you this. I actually like this product. Like I see there's a few people, one, 
two because it's the same person and three. There's a handful of people slightly above a thousand reviews. However, there's a lot of people, 21 reviews. Oh, hold on, it's not the same thing. Don't look at that. But 63 reviews, 23 reviews making three grand, 65 reviews. I like this product, so I'm gonna write this product down. Air purifier bags. And I'm gonna write that product down so we can reference it um, for tomorrow and stuff when we actually start trying to find a supplier, sourcing a supplier and manufacturing this product. But that almost looks like a decent product. So we're not gonna beat on that too much. You got the point. How we found that product is we went to new releases. We went to Home and Kitchen. We scrolled down and we found it right here on the new releases. So you could continue this kids desk and chair set, continue to do this and you will eventually find oil sprayer for cooking. Like, and then just keep right. Like I said, write a list down, write, write a list and then go back and actually do your research on the broadest keywords possible at a later time, spend an hour to develop a list, make a big list and then um, move forward with product research. So, Another thing you could do is you could go over to best sellers and do the same thing. So let's say we're in home and kitchen. Something I would like to do a little bit different in best sellers is uh, I would like to dig deeper. Uh, let's try something different. Let's try kitchen and dining. Um, bar tools and drinkware. Kitchen and table linens. Let's click that. Um, No, I don't know. I don't know about kitchen table ends. Let's do. So these are what we call subcategories. And the reason why you're looking for a subcategory is because if you're looking at a big category like this, you're seeing big brands, Bounty, Brawny, uh, this, uh, the K cups for your, whatever they're called. These are all really big brands. And like I said, we don't want to compete against big brands. So we definitely want to dig deeper. Um, dig, we definitely want to dig deeper into our subcategories when we're doing this. So let's do, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just click something. Kitchen and dining. I'll do kitchen and dining. Um, and we'll cook. I don't know. Hold on. I don't want to do that one. I want to do, Maybe home decor. Let's do, uh, pillows might be kind of hard. Back to, back to the apartment. What do we have? Let's look. I always like to stay around kitchen stuff for the most part, health and household. Home and kitchen. That's what we did last time, right? Um, maybe we could do, uh, we'll see. Yeah, home and kitchen subcategories. Um, bedding, bath, furniture. We'll do, we'll just keep going. Kitchen and dining, and then we'll do cookware, coloring next, dining and entertaining. Um, bar tools and drinkware. Just keep digging down deeper into these subcategories. Um, that's probably about, I don't want to do that. Let's do. All right, this is getting too much. Just dig in, find something. Let's just click, uh, we can probably stay here because these don't look like name brand stuff. So scroll through here, Munchkin's name brand, Oster's name brand. Um, but you can look in here, Munchkin does a little things. Glass, Tronco glass water bottle, straw, silicone protective sleeves. So let's look at, let's look at this product. So we're gonna click it. It's got way too many reviews, but let's just see what it's doing. They are out of stock. Tronco 20 inch glass water bottle. That must be a color doing 23,000. The whole listing, the parent, the two pack. Oh, it's a two pack. 
Yeah, it's a big brand. It looks like they have a lot of stuff going on. Um, 186,000, 285,000 for the two pack. So, but let's just type in glass water bottle. All departments, glass water bottle. And you see there's over 4,000 results. So it's a little bit more, a lot more competitive. Um, we're going to click the search bar and then just wait for it to load. I feel like these probably aren't right. There we go. Maybe. All right. So as you see, the Tronco is the first one that is not sponsored doing 186,000. We have some doing 800, 700. I don't like that. This one's doing 17,000, 10,000. But you see, there's a lot of people with over a thousand reviews again. So I would not play in this niche. I would go ahead and get away from this product. Um, but real quick recap on Amazon search bar, type letters, find a product. Okay, not letters like that. Type words like wood, come up with products. Um, space bar, keep searching that way. Again, use new, rela new releases to find products. And then also you have the option to search best sellers, just like you searched new releases and come across products that way. Uh, we're gonna move forward by going over to Alibaba. This is another website uh, that I like to use for product research. So let's go right here to um, search the search bar, just like you did on Amazon. So I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. You would go right here, type in a word, type in a letter, type in phrases, whatever you want to do, and use the suggested search uh, words that come up. This is my history, but use uh, any suggestion that comes up. So, same thing. If we type the word wood, what pops up? Wooden toys, wooden box, wooden pellets, wood boiler, wood watch, wood, wood router. This is totally different stuff than what popped up on Amazon. Hit the space bar, you get a whole bunch of other stuff. Type a letter, you get a bunch of other stuff. So this is a good way, again, I'm um, not gonna show you anything. Uh, another thing I like to do on Alibaba though, is I like to scroll down, look at all of these. They have live streams, new product launches. Look at some new products that are being launched and stuff of that nature. Go through here and see what's selling. I like to look right here, new arrivals. So let's click on the new arrivals. And there we go. Uh, let's click, like I said, I like Home and Garden, right? So let's look in here and just take a look at a product that we don't, I've never seen this, what is this? Magic Multifunctional Rotate Vegetable Cutter. So let's take, so let's say this, we wanna see if this is a good product. We're gonna add it to our list and look, look at stuff later, go through all the battle about, add a bunch of stuff, but what you're gonna do is grab what you think is a broad, the broadest keyword and take it over to Amazon plug it in and hit enter. And look, it pops up, you got 267 results. It really pops up the exact same product. I would look at a bunch of different, I would, I would type this a bunch of different ways, like maybe just vegetable cutter, maybe multifunctional vegetable cutter. Um, but you get the point, the product did pop up. Let's see what kind of revenue these stores are bringing. Again, these first four ones are sponsored by the look of that. Um, but looking right here, they're only doing 3,000, 2,000, 1,000, 1,000 bucks. They're not doing that much in revenue. What is this? Okay, so you see they're doing 205,000. It's a totally different product. So granted, this that, that bowl's doing 15,000, which isn't bad, but I don't really see many other people doing. I see this one again, 122,000. I like this product. So. Granted, the bowl we just looked at is not performing well whatsoever. Look what we came across. We came across this uh, full star vegetable chopper. So they're doing 205,000. So let's go up here and type in vegetable chopper, chopper. And you see how I typed the word vegetable and how many other options came up? All those are good options to continue to look at, but we're gonna continue moving forward with this vegetable chopper. 
And then look, there's 3,000 results. Always look at that number. That's a lot of results. Um, but just for the sake of this, imagine if it was only 400 results and we clicked this Jungle Scout button to see what was going on. We are going to see a lot of revenue. 85,000, 122,000, 440,000. So this was a really good product. It looks like back in 2017, 18, 2019, 2017. So a few, you had to get in this product, I would say probably 2018 um, to be up here with these guys. So this person launched in 2019 and they're only, they're doing 27,000. Um, 2020, I mean, um, 2020, 8,000. It's a very, it looks like it's gonna be a very hard, because a bunch of these people that launched in 2020 probably already have ranked another product with their brand. Um, but as you can see, the reviews do not meet our criteria. They all have thousands and thousands on thousands of reviews. So this is not a product I would attempt to sell because I wouldn't want to tie my money up in something like that. Um, so let's move on. Let's go back over here to Alibaba. And you got the point. So scroll down, do this over and over. Like, uh, what is this stuff? Like this, lovely small passion fit pet. Fashion transparent raincoat. It's a raincoat for your dog. So you got to think people that shop on Amazon are wanting to buy products that they can't just go to Walmart and buy. Um, over half of all the e-commerce sales, 50% of all online sales happen on Amazon. And it's all by the click of a button. Everyone's credit cards are already input. They have Amazon Prime memberships. They just buy random stuff. So that being said, you want to keep your price point anywhere between 14, 15, 16, dollars all the way up to 40, 50, 60, 70 dollars. In that price range is what we call impulsive purchases. People buy impulsively because like, if you want to buy something for 10, 20, 30, $40, you can make that decision usually without your sp spouse or your significant other. However, if you wanna make a $30,000 purchase or a multi hundred dollar purchase for the sake of this, that you will probably have to discuss that with someone else and that is in your household most of the time. So that being said, try to keep it in the impulse price range, impulsive purchase price range. So you're more likely to sell it without there being any like people. Because if somebody's like they've looked at it, the chances of them coming back three days to your specific product listing because there's multiple people selling it is going to be a lot, more, a lot slimmer than if they were to purchase it immediately the first time they see it. So let's make sure we stay in the right price range, 14, 15, 16, 17, all the way up to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars, depending what how much money you really have to get invested. But that's what I prefer is right in there, and I recommend that to all of you. So that's enough really about Alibaba. You saw what you do, you scroll through here, you find products, you take them back to Amazon, you search them, you look at the competition, you look at the revenue, you look at the amount of reviews, and then you base your your criteria off of or your, your uh, product based off of data. Uh, let's move forward to another one. And our next one is going to be uh, the Wish app. I don't know if you've ever heard of Wish. A lot of people probably have. The problem with Wish is the shipping times are usually super long, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks now. And the products are usually a very cheap quality. So let's go over to Wish. All right, we're now over here in Wish. Um, like I said, it's just a, it's a, it's a website people buy on. It's like a AliExpress. It's a drop shipping website. Um, but like I, what I like to do is I like to go look at almost all the tabs popular, not usually seasonal, not Halloween. I don't like seasonal products, um, popular tabs and scroll down and just look at the products just like we did at Alibaba and then go pull them over to Amazon and see if anything is actually selling or if it's uh, listed there and making good revenue. And the one thing I really like about doing this is, like you see, usually products that pop up a bunch will be products based off of maybe other products you have searched on the internet and stuff like that, just due to pixels and stuff like that. So whatever you're searching and whatever your neighbor is searching is gonna be two totally different lists of products all the time. Just like it won't always be the same as if you were using the black box method with criteria. If everybody was using the exact criteria, um, low reviews, high reviews, low revenue, high revenue, everything is exactly the same. Everybody would see the same exact products, ultimately leaving, leaving everybody to launch the same exact product as their own. And uh, that's why I really like to think outside the box and do 
product research methods like this because it's not going to always be the same. Everybody's going to see different products and get different opportunities. So I would just scroll through here just like you did there. Look at this Queen King stuff, whether it be shirts and stuff, and go back to Amazon to see if any of this stuff is selling. Um, let's try to find something kind of simple. Um, let's go. What would I like to see? Like a kayak. I'm obviously, I, I might not want to sell a kayak. Uh, and make sure you don't sell other people's brands and stuff. Obviously your goal is to brand your own thing, but let's go to the top. What was at the top? I was talking when we were scrolling. Bike queen. What's this? Lights. Just scroll through here. I know this could be tedious. I know this video may be a little drawn out, um, but this is really me researching. There's nothing I haven't, this wasn't planned. I'm really just showing you exactly what we do and what you have to go through. So please just bear with me for a moment. We're going to try to find something here to search. Car seat. Let's do this. Car plush seat cover. Car, car, car. Let's just copy and paste what you're seeing. Come in here. I'm not gonna do this, but maybe one time, just so you, you understand it. Car seat cover over 4,000 results. You see the products look almost identical, that one does. This is a dog one, so there we go. Like, plush paws products came at car seat cover with pet harness. Like, that almost, when you look through here, I would almost search uh, pet, car seat cover for pet, or pet seat cover, pet car seat cover. Something like that, maybe something to do with pets. Like this one, dog back seat cover um, for pets. Like, they're bigger, they're all, it's a whole seat. But, whatever. Let's look at the results, see what's going on here. We have, let it load because you'll have skewed data for a minute. A sponsored ad. It's not even a car. So look again, this is not a car seat cover. It's a car seat gap organizer. Um, whatever that is, look at their reviews and look at the revenue. So if I was to take the keywords car seat Gap organizer, storage, console site. Take a bunch of those keywords, write them down, put them in a notes file, and then go search them on Amazon separately to see. Um, we'll actually look in just a second, but let's look at the revenue on this. That's a big car seat cover doing 33,000. This little one's doing 1,000. It's got a lot of reviews though. Um, 764 reviews. I don't even know what that is. Bunting bag to protect baby? That has nothing to do with the car seat cover. But again, you can go search those products because look, they're doing $70,000 with 764 reviews. So I found all of these products. Like, what is this? That's another thing. Ultra plus, is that another baby thing? I don't even know what that is, but it's doing $110,000. Um, it's got a thousand reviews. So, but scroll through here, like I've taught you and just do that. But let's, I want to look at this car seat gap or console side pocket storage. Car seat gap organizer. Car seat. I, I really don't know what keywords to go with this. There, that popped up. It's the thing. 986 results for a car seat gap organizer. It makes, and makes. And remember, the better your picture looks, the I don't even know how they're getting away with pictures like this. You're supposed to have a completely white background like this. I don't know how they get away with this sometimes. But the better your picture looks. The more, the better, the more sales you're going to get. It's just, just a fact. Um, but, but let's look at this. Dave, 324 reviews making $25,000. Oh, hold on. It's a sponsored ad, but it's still, it's still a product. Um, this one's got one review making $3,000. $80,000, three grand, 3,000 reviews. Drop, stop. That's a horrible picture. That's an absolutely horrible picture. And they're doing 
$185,000. They've been on since 2013. That's why. They're probably like the people that first came out with this thing. Um, 3,000 reviews, $80,000. But just scroll through here. You see this. Um, a lot of low reviews. A lot of high, the low reviews right here, they're still doing decent money. They're still doing decent. Um, level. It's just something I would look at. I would look like look at all of these people. A four, like they're making eleven thousand dollars a month with four hundred reviews. Four thousand dollars, not the most, but they, not the most, but it's something like it's still decent. I like I said, I like to look for ten thousand. It's maybe not be a product I would try, um, depending what your risk tolerance is, but. There's not a lot of thousand reviews. There's a, lo a bunch of a low level reviews with decent. I feel like if you took this product, you made it very unique compared to all of these. Go through, look at these listings, look at the reviews customers have left, look at the bad reviews and see where you can improve this product based off of what customers have complained about and make your product better. You could easily come up here and be with this guy right here at $33,000. Easily. Not easily, but it can be done. It can be done. Get yourself a portion of that. Imagine if you were at $20,000, right? Like, so that shows you we found that product just off of the Wish app because we typed this product in. We then came across that other product. So I hope you see the power of that. I hope you see the power of the tool. Um, let's now move forward to our last website I like to search on which is Etsy, as you can see here we're on Etsy.com. And what I like about Etsy is all the products are pretty unique. They're handmade on Etsy supposedly. And so it's usually unique designs and stuff of that nature. However, these products can be manufactured, obviously like cups and stuff, you manufacture them. I see this as people's names, but if you did bride and bridesmaids cups, you could have those pre-manufactured and sent over to Amazon. So let's scroll down. If you look right here, editor's picks, I like to clip, click one of the edit editor's picks categories. This is the boo category, so it's Halloween related. And like I said, I don't like seasonal products due to the fact they're not evergreen. I want an evergreen product that sells day after day, month after month, year after year. Um, so which these pillows probably would. But let's scroll down and go to the bottom. And this will give you access to these editor, other editors picks. And I like design ideas and inspirations because this is different ideas and stuff like that, that other people create, craft, whatever, like this two tone shelf, um, these coffee mugs you can sell. Uh, so you see a lot of Halloween stuff just because Etsy does favor holidays and stuff and trending stuff. So they're obviously going to show you products, but if you scroll, you'll find products that doesn't matter like this, um, cheese board, which I actually know somebody who sold one of these and made a ton of money. So, but let's scroll back up and just pick something bit of ease like uh, this Michigan pint glass. Uh, let's go over here to Amazon. Amazon. Michigan pint glass. And just look and see if anybody is selling that. Is that the product? That kind of looks like it. That's a four pack. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, you see it right there. That's 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 the cup. Let's go ahead and uh, search it and see if it's worth selling. And it does not look like this is a good idea. It's probably a good idea on what's this 22,000 just regular cups probably a good idea maybe on Etsy it's probably just a horrible idea the thing about Etsy is they're probably they're not holding inventory like I said if they're uh, creating this product as they come in on order it's called print on demand someone orders it then they print the Michigan logo on it so it costs them no money that um, create a listing on Etsy so let's look but that's Yeti so you see all these ones that are actually making money, they're just glass cups from a different, that's only like $2,000. Yeah, so it doesn't look like the Michigan pint cups were a good idea. Um, but as always, remember to use this to scroll through and see if you can find something that may be a good idea.
Because if something else is on this page that you're seeing it that is selling, green whiskey glasses, and you can launch whiskey glasses. They're doing seventeen thousand dollars with four hundred and seven reviews. Um, I might use those. Let's click them and see what happens. So what are these large beer glasses? I, I like this whiskey glasses. Let's type whiskey glasses in. Whiskey glasses. Over 10,000 results. So they have a lot of results. Probably not something I would get into. Let's click here. And then as you can see, let it generate. Um, these people are making 98,000, 40,000, 90,000. They have a lot looking at it. Okay, so now there's a bunch of 2,000 reviews, 2,000 reviews, 2,000 reviews, 1,000 reviews. But these people up top here, 815 reviews. That's cool. See how you see how they differentiate the product with the box and everything. However, they're only generating thirty-two thousand dollars, probably because of the price range and most people rather six cups than two. So sometimes you don't want to go overboard, but you can see how you can differentiate your product and get up and just be different. So you'll get sales by being different. Um, like this person, that is a I've never seen a whiskey glass like that in my life, and they're doing one hundred and ten thousand a month. So, creating different products. What's that? That one looks cool. They're only doing 4,000 a month. Um, this has 331 reviews, but you see that, uh, you see how that works. Just scroll through there. You found that through that. I'm not saying that's not a good product at all. Don't do that one. But let's go back over here to Etsy and scroll for just a little bit. See if we can find something else. Like, uh, well, let's, let's use this, uh, Oak, the serving board, for example. Oak serving board. I would probably click trade because it's the first one to populate. 661 results. Obviously, this can be typed a trillion different ways. You could actually get rid of the word oak and just type ser serving board, and and you'd probably have 10,000 or 20,000 results. But I just wanted to type in exactly how we saw it. As you can see, they only have 38 reviews and they're doing 10,000. This person is not making any money, but that look, that seems really expensive. Let me, yeah, like 60 bucks versus 30. I would buy the $30 one. Um, 446 reviews, but overall, I see a lot of people not, I see a lot of people not making money with it. A lot of low reviews though. Large wood cutting board. You see, okay, now the, they put a picture of the packaging in there. They put a picture of the cheese uh, cutter, the uh, knife, the cheese knife, the sharpening blade, the little, the wood cleaner brush. Everything in that picture is what's making them $47,000 a month versus somebody who does a picture like that. Like, it's so much. Let's just go to the main page right here. I just want to show you Whenever you make your product look like it is going to give so much more value than everything else, like even these, like that's 609 uh, reviews, they're probably doing decent. In fact, it shows right here, they're doing $23,000 by having this pretty, you see they have the little knives inside of the cutting board, stuff like that. Um, that picture looks way better than the picture beside it. I'd click that one. That has too much mirror going on. I don't know why that person, I do that whenever you're doing like a Shopify store or something, you're running an advertisement, but not for your main product image. It's, and if they did, it needs to be minimal. That is like, it's literally like they flipped the image or it's too distinct. Um, but you see how separating yourselves with this is way better. But let's go back and just continue to do this until you find products. Real quick, I want to show you a product. I actually just had to record this, re-record this section of the video and actually the previous section. <clears throat> My camera died. But as I was looking last time at those Michigan cups, I came across this um, silicone pint glass and I wanted to show you to it. 
if my camera didn't die last time, it would have been in the video and it was the very first time I've seen this pint glass. And as I was looking at it, it looked like a phenomenal product because look at this. Um, let it load real quick. And I just wanted to show you what to be aware of. So like it had 125 reviews and it was doing $28,000. 30 reviews to $80,000 for these silicone cups right here, right? Um, every one of these listings are a different listing and they're all doing 80,000, 8,000, 60,000. That's a glass one doing 290,000. So that's totally different. That's not what we searched. So be aware of that. But then more of these, more of these. And then for a second, I thought this was a great product. Everything's got 30 reviews. Everything's very minimal, right? And then it come to, um, I noticed that it said Silly Pint as the brand over and over and over and over and over and over again. So that is a big indicator that they own a patent on the product. And then if you actually pay attention, once you were to do more research, which would be looking into that, you actually see they typed the word patented into the title. At first, if you're just looking at the numbers, you can overlook that. So I wanted to be sure to point that out to you because in the previous video when I was recording, I thought it was a great product because I was so focused on showing you guys the numbers and the reviews that I wasn't looking over here. By the time I did see that, I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. So that is a patented product, so don't go sell this product. Um, and, and that brings me to the next point of always be sure you check your local, you check your the trademark database. Just go to Google, type it in trademark database patents and stuff, USPTO.gov. Um, it's right here. Um, here, I'll, I'll open it up so, yeah. That's, um, I'll open up two and then I'll just show you the website so you can write them down. Um, but real quick, now if you're looking at this though, we did we did see this for $285,000 monthly revenue, 7,000 reviews, way too many reviews, but it's a glass water bottle with a silicone protective sleeve and a bamboo lid. So that brings you to, we could go search that product and see if there's a lot of competition. I'm going to assume there is just because it's a cup, it's a glassware, so silicon, like those things were trending a few years ago um, where people blew up with them. Everybody was launching cup businesses, but you get the point of that. So let's jump over here real quick before we end this video. Uh, here's your uh, website, uspto.gov forward slash trademark. We'll bring you right here to the trademark database and uh, uh, which is actually this, this expired. That was, but this will bring you to trademarks and you can click um, apply for trademark, search for trademarks. And then if you search trademarks here, um, search our trademark database, which was the other website I tried to pull up. Uh, you can do a basic word mark search um, where we would do or, word and or design. Um, usually just do a basic word. Um, I'm just gonna type in their brand and see, I think that's how you spelled it. Yeah, Silly Pint. Uh, silly Pint, Lemon Light Company. Containers, namely pint glasses, shot glasses, beverageware, and dishware. First in commerce. So, so this is a trademark for. This is a trademark. You need to actually look up a patent, um, because the trademark is the brand, the logo, this, their name, that right there. That's what they have a trademark on. Record one of two. You need to make sure you have to see if they have a patent or a design patent on the silicone pint glass. I feel like that's what they have because uh, we're actually, I think we're under word marks. But you get it. Do your research on here that shows you trademarks, patents. Go look um, back up. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. That's, you, that, it is what it is. Um, or you could always, like, I'm not a professional. You could always hire a professional to do this, which. I'm not going to recommend or not recommend that. That's up to you. It costs a lot of money though. So when you're first starting, it's not something I personally did. So, but if I was building a big, 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 big brand and I thought I was going up some, if I was creating something, a whole new patent, a whole new design, I would definitely get it patented if it was mine. That way I could sell for royalties later. Um, so without further ado, that was it. Quick recap. So you have the search bar method on every single platform. You have Amazon, you have Alibaba, you have Wish, you have Etsy, you have the Chrome extension. Um, I will give you a link 
to an affiliate. It's a, I do, it's a, it is an affiliate link. Disclaimer, I will make a com slight commission off of it if you use the uh, affiliate link to get Jungle Scout. Um, I will include that in the email I sent you. And uh, that'll probably be is, or there may be one below this video. If there's not, if there's no link below this video, just go ahead and look in your um, your uh, email that I originally sent you with this video training. And for tomorrow, I want you to make sure that you are here tomorrow, you're ready. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna have another video. It's gonna be based off of taking the products that we, a product, whether it's a product we found today, that air purifier bag or something else, and we're gonna learn how to uh, find a manufacturer and talk with a manufacturer, um, what template I use to uh, negotiate terms like prices and shipping and everything of that nature, packaging. So we're gonna go through all of the manufacturing side of the product tomorrow. So make sure you look out in your email, inbox or spam folder for that video. I'm looking forward to it. I will see you all tomorrow.